In the months following a halving, the price of Bitcoin begins to move, but it takes another 12 to 18 months before it catches up to the projections made by the stock to flow model. The facts don't lie, and even though it may feel differently, the market is still in a bullish phase. All of those numbers are on chain. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. We ought to be present. Even if it's implausible, I would be concerned if we got yellow or green at this moment. Yet we are missing that item. Its hue is crimson. You're looking at a bull market. I find solace in that. Despite worries that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin might not see substantial price increases before. The 2024 to 2025 bull market ends. A well-known anonymous Bitcoin analyst has expressed his optimistic market forecast. An earlier video from the ex-institutional investors plan B YouTube channel dealt with the growing gloom and doom among cryptocurrency investors. According to him. Prices have a habit of shockingly recovering right when pessimism is at its height, with the possibility to achieve his end-of-year projection of $150,000 per coin. Plan B has always stressed how the price changes of Bitcoin are affected by its biannual halving events. Those who are anticipating the end of the bull market will be wrong, in his opinion, because prices will climb swiftly once. The current consolidation phase ends, which he attributes to mild capitulation. Later this year, he predicts that the price of a Bitcoin would range from $80,000 to $120,000 per coin, having doubled from its previous cycle lows about six months before the halves and then doubling again about six months following the halving. Plan B predicts that Bitcoin values would surge even. Further from October 2024 to November 2025, easily breaking beyond the six-figure mark before the cycle ends. I find RSI to be intriguing, could be described as constant between 60 and 70 or as having dropped somewhat. It was 69 when it started and now it's 65, some say the market bull has ended. And I must say their logic is really captivating. That Bitcoin's value declines over time is the underlying rationale. Therefore, the tops and bottoms go progressively. Lower with each cycle. Another thing that stands out in this RSI chart is the trend of declining returns. As for declining returns, I don't buy into it. The concept of exponential returns is important to me. Even those who believe the market's bull run has ended notice a leveling off. Crypto markets, in their view, are thus returning to a more typical trading range. That being said, the RSI typically trades between a 30 to 70 range. Accordingly, the range for stock prices in the Forex market, for instance, is 30 to 70. Bitcoin has risen somewhat. Therefore, the Bitcoin market's normalization at its top at above 70 could be interpreted as a bear market with greater down into the 30 range. The logic behind a bear market makes sense to me, but I still don't believe it will happen. I think. We will witness exponential returns rather than diminishing ones. RSI readings over 80 once again, following 2013 and 2017. The results will be revealed in due course, but it is intriguing and we will be keenly monitoring the RSI. There will be a banana zone. You will be rewarded with that. Bananas like these. Your prize for clinging on for dear life is that curve on the chart. Patience being on top of. Your game, avoiding leverage, avoiding foolish FOMO, investing in the appropriate assets, avoiding extreme risk, and letting things unfold naturally are all important. Another virtue is patience. I understand that everyone is anxious and perplexed after all. The banana zone is hilarious. The fact that they call the banana phallic makes it humorous and entertaining. Prices skyrocket, and everyone is jumping on the bandwagon, I understand. On the other hand, I totally get it. It is everyone's desire. Look, I'm trying to assist as many people as I can, so I take it seriously. It's also scary to stick my neck out this much. Honestly, I believe this field is going to have the greatest wealth accumulation in history, moving from 2.5 trillion in crypto to 100 trillion by, say, 2032, and I want, I want everyone to be a part of it. Difficulty is going to be high. At some time, you're bound to mess up. But I will as well, because it is the path to a future free of financial strife we will endeavor to reach there unscathed and rich. Despite worries that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin might not see substantial price increases before the 2024 to 2025 bull market ends, a well-known anonymous Bitcoin analyst has expressed his optimistic market forecast. On his Plan B channel on YouTube, he recently posted a video, There is growing gloom and doom among cryptocurrency investors, which the former institutional investor discusses. He makes the observation that prices often surprise people with a comeback just when their pessimism is at its worst, giving him hope that we could see his end-of-year projection of $150,000 per coin. Plan B has always stressed how the price changes of Bitcoin are affected by its biannual halving events. 
He thinks that small concessions are to blame for the present consolidation phase. Once this stage finishes, he believes the bear market forecasters will be wrong because prices will rise quickly. He predicts that by the end of this year, Bitcoin will be worth anywhere from $80,000 to $120,000 per coin, having doubled from the prejudice cycle lows about six months before the halving and then doubling again about six months following the halving. Plan B predicts that Bitcoin values would surge even further from October 2024 to November 2025, easily breaking beyond the six-figure mark before the cycle ends. Bitcoin has already achieved a market value of $1 trillion, even though it is just 15 years old. Fred Krueger, a Bitcoin maximalist and mathematician, sees Bitcoin as having multiple uses beyond only facilitating transactions. He thinks it has the potential to become a different sort of international money. He thinks worries about its rivals are irrelevant and stresses the significance of not passing up this financial breakthrough. As interest in Bitcoin increases, particularly among financial institutions, Kruger predicts it will have far-reaching consequences around the world, bodes well for the prospect of such a future. Like the industrial. Revolution in the United States in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Bitcoin will have far-reaching effects on global economies. It will be massive. I believe it will be adopted and honestly, it isn't going to require anything. It is not a method of payment, so there's no need for it. All you have to do is believe and comprehend that, you know, this is not a method of payment. At this very moment. The fact that we have a new kind of currency that has been in circulation for 15 years and is currently worth $1 trillion is what really matters. Also, you shouldn't be making a bunch of new addresses that just contain one Bitcoin. I see. Consequently, this pattern becomes apparent. Everything is expanding to the right according to a power law new addresses with. One Bitcoin, new addresses with $1,000, new addresses with 0.1 Bitcoin, and new addresses with 10 Bitcoin. Thus, uh, in my opinion, these addresses do serve as a reliable surrogate for the expansion of our customer base. In my opinion, that is not the sum. Yes, I completely agree. Yeah, thus Tom Young wholeheartedly concurs. Due to the low mining activity, supply has remained rather constant. Among the things I included in that document is this, let's look at mining right now. In 2025, mining will account for 0.78% of Bitcoin's supply. There's no big deal. 1% of the Bitcoin supply will be mined. As an example, there's Mt. Gox. All right then.